But once again, we're here and like to say good evening to all of our listening uh, viewers, to our, our family members, and to all of those of you who are just excited about hearing the word of God and are always looking for an answer in the, in the scriptures. So we're here to make sure that we give you uh, what God gives to us, and we pray that when God gives us things to give to you, that you are a blessing. And we understand that when we give you uh, the word of God, there's a boomerang effect. So when you're blessed uh, on Wednesday evenings, we're also blessed too. I want to talk today, uh, uh, this evening, about the fact that leadership is everything. And so we understand that it's important for us to vote because we need to make sure that they're good leaders and godly leaders and uh, leaders who care about individuals and care about uh, what's going on around them and care about uh, people and nations and states and, and certain things and situations, uh, you know, wanting them to get better and move forward. So we want to make sure that we continue to pray for good leaders. And then this, we can learn a lot out of this lesson ourselves that um, when we are in charge, when we are leading individuals or leading in different areas, uh, we can learn something and learn how and what it is that we're supposed to do as leaders. And I want to say again, leadership is everything. And so a successful leader must view every situation in terms of uh, available resources, money, raw materials, technology, and most important, people. So when you are a leader and you're going to be successful, you need to make sure that you uh, look at situations and look at these situations in terms of the availability of resources. You've got to see how much resources you have, uh, particular money, raw materials, uh, technology, and, and then what's most important is, is people. And so we understand that great leaders come from a combination of these two things. Great leaders come from, or great leadership comes from a combination of natural intuitive ability and learned skills. So in order to be a great leader, you have to have a natural intuitive uh, ability. You have to have the ability. And then they'll learn skills. So when you put these two together, you're naturally, you know, some people say leaders are born and some say uh, leaders, uh, they, they actually, they learn as they go. Uh, but we're saying today, and when we say we just make suggestions, we want you to kind of uh, just listen and you decide, you know, uh, you make the decision as to what you want to believe uh, and what you see uh, as it relates to you and your situation. But we're saying that a leader needs, uh, he needs some natural skills. Okay, he needs to be taught and trained. He needs to be taught and trained, but he also needs some natural skills. He needs to the, have the ability and the intuition to see something and just, boom, be able to make decisions. Okay? And so here again, we're saying, so what we're saying is we need your natural ability, a, a good leader, a great leader, or great leadership is a combination of you having natural abilities and learned skills. Intuitive leaders can sense what's happening among their people and among, and almost instantly know their hopes, fears, and concerns. Okay? So when you see a leader that has intuitiveness, he can sense what's happening among the people. And that's what we need. We need leaders who can sense, we need to vote for leaders who can sense what's happening among uh, the people and instantly know their hopes, their fears, and their concerns. And so I want you to remember this. It is not the responsibility of one individual to govern, rule, oversee, administrate, regulate, okay, masses of people. Let me say that again, and we get ready to go into Exodus chapter 18, verse 13 through 27. We're going to Exodus. It is not the responsibility of one individual. One individual, I don't care if they want to be a dictator, I don't care how, how much power they want to have and how many decisions they want to make by themselves. One individual is not capable of governing. That means ruling, overseeing, or administrating, or regulating a masses, a multitude of people. It's impossible. All right? Um, so we find that Moses' father-in-law, how many of y'all remember Moses' father-in-law, Jethro? All right, Jethro was uh, Moses' father-in-law, and he was a natural, intuitive leader who recognized a leadership problem right away. He looked at Moses, he, he was invited in, uh, in town, and he was in town, and uh, he was walking around, and, 
And so Moses was going about his business, and Moses was, you know, at this particular spot, and he was, you know, he had a line of folks from here all the way downtown, you know, trying to make decisions based on what that problem was. And Jethro saw that, and he, and immediately he said, oh, we're going we, we to have a problem. And so he did something. He said something. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. And remember now, leadership is everything. And so we see here in Exodus chapter 18, starting uh, at verse 13, it says, it says the, next, the next day Moses said to judge the people, and the people stood around Moses from morning to evening. Okay, you got one guy, Moses. He's, he's telling people what they need to do and what they need to stop doing and how they need to fix this. And said, and said that Moses was sitting near the chair and he was, people were lined up and he was judging them. And it says they stood around him from morning to evening. When Moses' father-in-law, this is Jephro, saw that all that he was doing for the people, he said, what is this that you do for the people? Why do you sit alone and all the people stand around you from morning to evening? He's like, man, what are you doing? Moses said to his father-in-law, because the people come to me to inquire of God. So Moses is saying, look, these people need help. And I am the man. I'm the man. I'm the mediator between them and God. And so they come to me for help. And they want to know uh, from God through me what it is that they need to do. So I'm committed to ministry. I'm committed to being the man of God. I'm committed uh, to serving God. I'm committed to serving God. And I'm committed to serving the people. And, and, and so, but Jephro said, let me tell you something. You're not going to last long like that. You are not going to be able. And that's a lesson in that, to, in that for us today, that one man can only, you know, we talk, we see, we see mega churches and we see a whole lot of things, uh, not only just churches, but uh, we see uh, organizations where there are thousands of people and we have one man or one or two people in control. Do you have to understand that in order for that to go like it needs to go, one person can't, can't uh, control all of that. He has to have organization. He has to have people under him that are able to carry out and represent. Notice, I, I want you to notice something about, about what I'm talking about now. I want you to notice that Jesus, when he came, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't uh, just try to do everything himself. You know, he recruited 12 men called disciples, and he put, he put heaven in them, and he trained them, and then he left and went back to heaven, and these guys did the same thing that he did. In other words, they rep reproduced themselves. And what we found out is that it, they reproduced themselves. And so um, everything, the spirit of God and the word of God and the ways of God and the ways of Christ was passed down through them, generation to generation, all the way to us. Okay? From 12 people. All right? But these 12 people, you know, they became apostles. They built churches. They, they uh, taught people. You know, young Timothy and a whole lot of other young ministers came up and and, and so that's the way it should be. One man cannot run, cannot run uh, masses and multitudes of people. So let's get back to, to what, what, what uh, Moses is saying or what his father-in-law is saying. Okay, let's, let's look at verse, um, verse 14. It says, when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he was doing for the people, he said, what is this that you do for the people? Why do you sit alone? With all these people are standing around from morning to evening. Moses said his father-in-law, because the people come to me to inquire of God. When they have a dispute, they come to me, Moses said. I judge between a man and his neighbor, and I make them know the statutes of God and his laws. So he's doing a good thing right now. Check this out. He's doing a good thing, but he's doing it the wrong way. He's doing a good thing, but he's not being organized about it. He's doing a good thing, but if he keep doing that good thing, he's doing it the wrong way, and he's going to suffer. And when he suffers, everybody's going to suffer. See, here's the deal you have to understand about the enemy. The enemy doesn't care if you're doing the will of God and the work of God, but if he, he wants you to get real busy and overwhelmed and burned out and, and become unhealthy in doing it, quote, ministry, okay? And so when you get sick and when you get to where you can't function anymore, then what happens? You suffer, your family suffer, and the people that you serve suffer, all right? And so Jethro is trying to get Moses to understand that, man, I understand your zeal, and what you're doing is good. You know, you're teaching them the status, the, the, the statue of God and his laws. 
but you can't keep doing it. Verse 17, Moses' father-in-law said to him, the things that you are doing is not good. Look at there. He said, what you're doing, Moses, is not good. Now, you have to understand Moses is the man. All right? So you have to understand his humility. You have to understand his attitude. A, another man comes to him, who is his father-in-law, happened to be his father-in-law, and tell him, man, what you're doing is not good. Mm-hmm. I wonder how would we have taken that if we, if we were the, the man between God and the people, millions of people, and somebody told us what you're doing is not good. You know, we probably would have went at them the wrong way. You, you don't tell you how you going to tell me this is not good? I'm ordained by God. I'm sent by God. I'm commissioned by God to do this. But Moses had an ear to hear. And then it says, it says to him, you will surely get this. This is Moses. Uh, uh, this is what Moses uh, father in law told him. All right. He says, you will surely wear out both yourself and these people with you. For the thing is too heavy for you. You are not able to perform it all by yourself. So you're going to wear yourself out and you're going to wear the people out. You're going to be here all day trying to, trying to solve problems and the people are going to be in the line all day. And some of them are going to get tired. They say, well, I'm just, you know, I, 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 just, I just can't wait any longer. You know, we'll just figure it out. He says, listen now to me. I will counsel you and God will be with you. Look at that. Jethro said, listen, listen to me, listen to me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to counsel you and God will be with you. This is what you need to do. And he told him two important things here. He says, first of all, one, you shall represent the people before God. In other words, bring in their cases and causes to him. Your job, Moses, is to listen to the people and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, or God, Lord God, such and such has this problem, this issue. We're asking you for direction. We're asking you for guidance, so and so on. What is it that you want them to do? Or God would just drop, uh, drop wisdom and good counsel into Moses' spirit, and he, begin, he will begin to tell the people what it is that they need to do. Okay, so you shall represent the people before God. And then the next thing he says, you, you teaching them, teach them the decrees and the law. All right. That means show them the way they must walk and the work they must do. So let's look at these two things again. You're going to represent the people before God. OK, you're going to you're going to take their calls in a case to God and then you're going to turn around and hear from God. And you're going to say to the people, this is what God wants you to do. And this is how you do it. All right. And then verse 21 says, moreover, you shall choose able men from all the people. All right. Now. So now we're getting down to the fact that Moses realized that Jethro said, you can't do this by yourself. There's two things you need to do. And then after this, you need to organize. You need to have a plan. You need to put a plan in place in your personal life. You need to have a plan in place. OK, if you're a leader in any area, if you if you head house, you're a head of a household or you over business or company or people or is it church or uh, 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 uh business you have to make sure that you organize and this is a good practice to put in place he says this is what you need to do he says moreover you should choose able men from all the people so you can't just choose anybody they have to be what able men all right he says choose able men all right from all the people then he says this is this is the qualification of these able men they have to be god-fearing men of truth look at here who hate unjust gain and place them over thousands hundreds, fifties, and tens to be their rulers. So you, there's a qualification that you have. And so when we're talking about voting, we're saying that, that one man can't run the country, one man can't run the state, one man can't run the city or the town. But we need to make sure that people that are in place, that they are, they are God-fearing people, they are God-fearing men, and they are God-fearing people with these qualities, they, they un, that they hate unjust gain, that they don't want to cheat people and steal and be unfair, okay, and, 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 and run a monopoly uh, on people and, and, and have favoritism and all this kind of thing. And he says, what you do is you get people and you put them over, break, break them up, break them up. Okay, break up, break up the group. If you got hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands, you got thousands, and then he said break them to hundreds, put them over thousands, put them over hundreds, put them over fifties and tens. All right? To be their rulers. Then he says, let them judge the people at all times. In other words, the day-to-day -day operation, let them deal with that. The stuff that have to deal with every day. He says, but, but every, he, he says, every great matter they shall bring to you. So it's something that's, that, that's, you know, that's monumental. He said, bring it to you, Moses. But every small matter they shall judge. All right? 
Then he says, so it will be easier for you, and they will bear the burden with you. Okay, look at that. Look at that. And so we have to be, we have, you have to be organized enough um, to where you don't try to take on the whole load and that you get help. It's important that we get help. And I, and I like the way Christ, did, Jesus did things because what his job was, you remember, you, remember the, you remember the scripture over Acts 1 and 8, and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me into Jerusalem and Jamer, uh, 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 Samaria, okay, and Judea and to the uttermost parts of the earth, okay? What he was saying is, is once the Spirit of God come in you, and once you are filled with the Spirit of God, and once you feel the Holy Ghost, baptized in the Holy Spirit, then now is you have the power and you have the authority to be a witness. You have the authority to carry the gospel and carry the good news. Okay, you have that authority because it was not meant for Jesus to, to do it all or for the disciples to do it all. And so it's not meant for one person to, to try to do everything. You know, it, it, even if even if you started a company and it's your company, you still are not, you, you don't have the ability and capabilities to run it all. Not if you got 10 plus people, okay? And in and, and my experience, anytime you have to manage more than 10 people, you're going to need some help. You're going to need some help. And sometimes you're going to need help with those. But you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna need some help. He says, so it's going to be easier for you, Moses, and, it, and, and, and they will bear the burden with you, these people that you call in to help you. If you will do this, look at this, verse 23 says, if you will do this and God so commands you, you will be able to endure the strain and all these people also will go to their tents in peace. And so you have to understand that in leadership, and particular good leadership, great leadership, the leader has to have intuition and he has to have the ability to lead. And he has to have the ability to pick out leaders within the group. OK, leaders within that group, well able, who are faithful, who are honest, that can come together and help to 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 lead and govern, govern the people and rule honestly and fair. OK, and so so I like what verse 24 says. Verse 24 says, so, so Moses listened to and heeded the voice of his father-in-law and did what? All that he had said. Isn't that something? Listen to his father-in-law. Do you understand that I don't care what position you're in and how high you are and what you're doing? Moses was God's man. He was ordained by God to lead the children out of the children of Israel out of Egypt. And yet there was a flaw in his life when it came to leadership. And God sent his father-in-law Jethro to talk to him. And the Bible says he listened. There's a lesson in that right there. So you have to understand that sometimes part of our problem is, is that we won't listen. We won't listen to good counsel. See, to know something that's true is one thing. You know, you're talking to people and, and people telling you what you need to do. And you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're right. And that's true. And I like that. And you know what? That's so exciting. And, and you know, I hear you. And you know, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. But as soon as the conversation is over, guess what you do? You do nothing. You change nothing. Okay? You go back to business as usual because that's comfortable. Do you understand when somebody comes, when somebody gives you counsel, um, no matter what it is, you have to, in order to change, you have to put a, after the council, you have to put a plan in place to change. You can't just hear council and say, I'm going to change. How are you going to change? How are you going to change when you hear that you need to do something different? You need to do, you need to do it another way. How are you going to change? You, can't, you ain't going to just all of a sudden, boom, change. God ain't going to all of a sudden just give it to you. If God had given it to you, you wouldn't have needed the council in the first place. So now, so now somebody's tell, told, they told you what it is you need to do. Now put a plan in place in order to get that done. How do I do it? So what do I put in place? What do I put in place? So the Bible says what Moses did, the first thing, he listened to all. He listened to all that he had that his father-in-law that that father told him to do. He didn't pick out parts that he liked and parts that he didn't like. He didn't say, I'm going to do a little bit of this or a little bit of that, and then everything else is going to be business as usual. See, when God gives us a plan or when God gives us counsel, we got to make sure we do all the counsel. Okay? Okay? 
It's no such thing as speeding a little bit. It's not, no such thing as running a little bit of the red light. Mm, y'all, get, y'all get the message. Y'all get the, y'all get the message. So, so you can't do just a little bit. You have to do all. He said he did all that he said. Moses, and, then so, and, so, and so now the Bible talks about what he did. Jethro told him what to do. Now the Bible says what he did. It says Moses chose able men out of all Israel and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, and of tens. And they judged the people at all times. The hard cases they brought to Moses, but every small matter they decided themselves. Then Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went his way into his own land. Okay? I want to share this with you, too. Over in Deuteronomy, chapter 17. Verse 14 through 20, because um, this is another this is this is talking about leadership and it's also kind of fine tuning as to the responsibilities of, of great men, men who are, are in leadership. This is a responsibility and this is spelling out a responsibility, uh, I believe, of, of, of a king. OK. All right. All right. So. You have to understand that the children of Israel, they're coming together and they're going to be a nation. And so they're going to choose a king and they're supposed to, here again, they got to have a plan in place, got to have order, got to have counsel on what it is you're supposed to do. So let's look at this. And, and in your leisure, I want you to uh, go back and, and read this and study this and see what else God gives you out of it. OK. All right. So it says the verse here in Deuteronomy, chapter 17, verse 14, we're going to start there. It says, when you come to the land. And this is God talking to to the Israelites because they're coming out of Egypt. He says, when you come to the land which the Lord your God gives you and you possess it and live there and then say, we will set a king over us like all the nations that are about us. So Lord telling them when you get to your land that I'm going to give you, there's going to come a time when you're going to want a king over y'all just like all other nations. All right. And so God is telling them that this is what they're going to want. He says, you shall surely set a king over you. All right. All right, so when we're looking at kings, we're looking at leadership, okay? So we're looking at kings, presidents, queens, prime minister, whoever, whatever their, their uh, title is, all right, this is what we're talking to be talking about. These are the individuals we're talking about who are over people, okay, over nations, all right? All right, he says, you shall surely set a king over you, over you, him whom the Lord, all right, oh, let's look at this now. It says, him who the Lord your God would choose. All right? So, so who the people pick, God has to be in agree with, agreement with him too. And so you have to be careful too. You have to understand that a lot of people say, well, God, God sent so-and-so, or God, this is God's man. You have to, a fruit, a tree is known by the fruit that it, bear, that it bears. You know if a man is godly and sent by God when he's doing God's will. When he's doing what God says he's supposed to be doing. That's how I know he's sent by God. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it confused. Sent by God and allowed by God is two different things. Sent by God is he's God's man. He's doing what God tells him to do. Allowed by God is he got the position, warned, whatever. But uh, God just allowed that to happen because that's what the people chose. But he's not God man, God's man at all or God's person at all. And if you don't believe it, look at the few, the fruits. Everything they touch turn to mud. Everything they, they say is, is chaotic and all of this kind of stuff. So that's how you could tell. So very quickly here, it says, you should surely set a king over you, him whom the Lord your God will choose, one from among your brethren. All right, you shall set a king over you. You may not set a foreigner who is not your brother over you. So he's talking about people that, that you pick a leader from within you. Why? Because he understands, you know, he's, he, he, uh, he can relate, he can connect. But he shall not multiply horses to himself or cause the people to return to Egypt in order to multiply horses since the Lord said to you, you should never return that way. Okay? All right? So multiplying the horses, it, it's, it's like the king, the man in charge, he should not be uh, just after filthy lucre and, and resources for himself and to build himself a name and to build himself a country and so on and so forth. All right, because a lot of times that's done on the backs of poor people, poor individuals. But he shall not multiply, okay, we said that. Uh, let's go to verse 17. And he shall not 
multiply wives to himself, that his mind and heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. Look at there. So he's not to have all these wives mm -mm, and concubines. That was one of Solomon's uh, mistakes. But, but isn't it amazing how he, Solomon made the mistake, but what he was supposed to be doing and the way he was supposed to have done it is right here in the Word of God. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so these, these verses and scriptures teach us a lot. He says not to multiply wives because what they're going to do, they're going to turn his heart against God. They're going to turn his heart against the true and living God. They're going to turn his heart into worshiping and serving idol God. And that's what happened. We find that Solomon built a lot of uh, uh, high places uh, to, to idol God. Isn't that amazing? Okay. And then it goes on to say, uh, shall he greatly multiply? He, 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 neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. And when he sits on his royal throne, look at there, he shall write for himself a copy of this law in a book out of what is before the Levitical priest. All right? In other words, he got to read the Bible too. Have mercy. In other words, as a king and as a leader, he got to know the Bible too. How can you lead people? How can you be called by God? And how can you lead the people of God? And how can you lead a nation under God if you don't know what God has to say? It is your responsibility by way of you being in that position. You are responsible to know what God has to say through his word for you and for the people, and you got to be in line. You can't do it on your own. I know sometimes people get into a situation and they get into a mindset because of their quote unquote success, they think they're bigger than God. But you need to keep reading your Bible because folk that think they're bigger than God, God just let them destroy themselves. God give them a time to change. God give them a time. To help people like he called them to help. Do you understand? You have to understand. You have to understand that the job of a king, the job whew, of a leader, a great leader, is to make sure that he walk in the will of God and he serve God and that he serve people. I have just run straight out of time. I'm out of time. I'll see you all next week. And I want you to continue to remember, make sure that you vote and make sure that you stay prayerful in these turbulent times. God bless you. We'll see you again.